Welcome to another episode of Fight Stories. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> you can't train with lambs if you're fighting lions. Comics are the biggest pussies you've ever met in your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mother was a fighter. She knocked out more men than I ever had. Hey guys, this is John Moses, co-host of Fight Stories. We have got a great episode lined up for you. We are talking to former MMA legend Gary Goodrich. Gary is famous for one of the most brutal knockouts in UFC history. Just about elbowed a guy's head clean off in UFC 8. Also, almost equally as famous for pounding a guy's dick into submission, which he talks quite candidly about. It's hilarious. Uh, one thing about the audio. The first 11 and a half minutes is a little shoddy. I just got this great new Zoom mic. Still kind of figuring out how to use it. And didn't realize that I was fucking up until that point. So, if, uh, if it's bugging you, skip ahead to the 11.30 mark. But, you know, if it doesn't bother you, listen to the first 11 minutes. Because Gary's got a great story. He went from working on an assembly line in, at a Honda plant to fighting in UFC 8 three weeks later and getting to the finals. Anyway, hope you enjoy the episode. Fight Stories, baby. Welcome to another episode of Fight Stories. My name is John Moses. Alongside in person, my partner. Tyler Morrison. Yeah, uh, listen, <laughs> I always get excited for these episodes. Uh, I just love talking about these fights. They're always funny and hilarious. However... This episode, my excitement is met with just a little bit of fear, <laughs> because we're sitting in the living room of uh, former UFC legend Gary Goodridge. Uh, Gary, thank you for, for agreeing to do this and coming on to the show. Yeah, this is great. I mean, we, yeah. we've been interviewing a few guys and, uh, you know, some guys with, the, you know, some good credentials and stuff, but, yeah. uh, like, to you know, your pedigree is uh, a little bit higher than... Uh, than than anything we've had. The average, the average Joes that... Uh, yeah, so just to tell you, like, sort of, like, how this thing came about, I've been in a ton of, like, street fights just growing up as a kid, but just, like, getting drunk and throwing bombs. And we just... And Tyler's been in some fights, and we just love talking about fights. But our fight cards are littered with tomato cans. And oh, God, yeah, no, it's not so, like, mu so many chumps, right? Yeah. <laughs> when we talk to, like, comics, I fucking walk out of the room, I'm like, yeah, I feel fucking extra tough today. And then when we talk to somebody who's actually in the fight game, I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Nothing has made us feel like bigger pussies than... Yeah, 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 yeah. Than doing this podcast with people who actually... Yeah, who actually fight for a living or just, like, fight all the time. So, um, for those of you guys who don't know, um, some of you, most of you probably have tuned into this episode because you recognize Gary's name off the, off the jump, but Gary holds one of the most, I don't want to say horrific, but definitely one of the most popular or most famous knockouts. Viral knockouts. Viral knockouts in, in UFC history. But I remember watching that thing live, and me and my cousin at the time, because we were always you know, get the UFC pay-per-views. Mm -hmm. And just after the first two hits, we were like, oh, and you would turn away from it. You're just like, God, stop it. Why doesn't somebody stop it? And we're talking about the elbow. The, the crucifix the same, the elbow crucifix. knockout. Oh, right. my God. And this is like back when UFC kind of was in its early, like, yeah. you know, birth. And uh, was it was it back when it was, uh, they didn't have weight classes then? No. No, it, there was weight classes? No, or there, no, there, there wasn't. wasn't. So this was like anything goes type thing back in the day. And my, my brother and I used to rent those on VHS. So yeah. this, this is like the original days. And it was one of the uh, first knockouts that like I saw as a kid going, oh my God, this is yeah. legit. Like this ain't WWE. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those UFC days, it was like whoever invented it. Like must have saw that movie Bloodsport and was like, we could do this. <laughs> you know, like remember Bloodsport? It was just anybody up against anybody. Yeah, and yeah. Then you you know somebody decided that this would be a, a viable thing. You yeah, know? Every Van Damme movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come yeah. to life. Yeah, it really was. How are we how are we gonna use Van Damme this time? And we're gonna put him in a tournament. And just the idea that you're gonna line you fucking guys up and you're okay, fight this guy and then you know go in the back and have a couple of Gatorades and come out and fight a totally different dude. How many? How much? How much time was there in between these fights? Uh, sometimes it was uh, twenty minutes. Sometimes it was five minutes. Actually, one time it was five minutes. What? Five fucking that's minutes? Insane. Yeah, but that's that goes from uh, the last, the, the the absolute last fight you're having. Right. Uh, mine was against on Friday. So you had to come out and get back in the ring. Oh, and prepare to fight a totally different animal. Absolutely, one hundred percent. That's crazy. That's, yeah, that was a real insane time. Yeah, cause um, it's like they didn't really like protect the fighters as much by doing that. Like you, you know what I mean? Like it's dangerous to <laughs> to have to fight someone. Yeah, well, yeah, well, tell us. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Great, I had a good time. 
mm -hmm. a great time. One of the job you can do by punching someone in the face and making good money. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and we said uh, watching that watching that clip like. After we've watched it a couple of times, I was like, God damn it, almost as impressive as the elbow and the knockout was you getting up after and like watching you like going, <laughs> like just the adrenaline coursing through your veins, you know? Yeah. Total beast mode. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the backstory of how you even got into that UFC was pretty interesting. It certainly was. You know, it was a good time. I had a great time. Yeah. Like, it was good. What was your training up until that? Like, you were trained as what? Traditionally a boxer or a kickboxer? I, I trained as a boxer a little okay. bit here and there. But um, my, my real training was really uh, nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I was just a tough guy. You were just a tough guy. So, I was just a tough guy. Well, I wasn't even a tough guy. People gave me that name, but I didn't do nothing. I was uh, the Canadian um, boxing champion, amateur boxing champion of a uh, um, while back. But what okay. happened was, here's the, um, it was the, the year that everybody went. It was the year after everybody went to the, the Olympics. Okay. So everybody was out of the, um, the, it was just a new fresh fresh blood for the, for this time. So when I came back, um, you know, I, there was nobody in there. So I won my fight just because I was bigger and stronger than my, my opponent. There was only one in the heavyweight, plus myself. And I, I just had to thump on him a few times. There was no <laughs> Just being bigger and stronger. There really is. Like when you when when you get to be your size, like what were you at that time? You're like you're six four, what two sixty five? Was that your fighting yeah, weight? Right now. Yeah. There that is such a huge fucking weight difference to even somebody who's two twenty five. Yeah. You know, like that mm -hmm. extra forty five pounds really makes a difference. So how old are you when this is happening? How old is that? When I'm like when you're like am, like amateur boxing amateur champ. Twenty six, maybe. You're twenty six. And then you're not really boxing in between 26 and 30. I'm not doing nothing. I you're not doing nothing. Nothing. I got a job at Honda. Yeah. And lifting weights here and there, but uh, nothing. So, so just a big strong dude. So who gives you this idea that you should be in the UFC? Um, my friends. I was sitting down in a room with a bunch of friends that um, I thought I should do it. And we were watching UFC you know, on the um, on the TV, and uh, they started dialing the phone here and there because they saw that. I was, what things you can buy, one eight hundred numbers from the UFC, so all sorts of different paraphernalia. Finally, got on the phone, and I'm sitting in the back because I'm the biggest guy in the room. I'm not supposed to be afraid. Right. I'm just sitting in the back, like just crawling back in the, under the chair, almost. It seems while you're like, watching the UFC, these guys, these guys are making these calls. These guys are making these calls, and then they finally got a hold of our Davies. That's the guy that uh, that invented the UFC to begin with. Oh man! They finally got a hold of our Davies. And uh, he came on the on the on the, the phone to me, and he says, uh, "Gary Cutter." She said, "I just seen you on TV like two weeks ago, harassing somebody, beating that big behemoth, Cleve Dean. Now Cleve Dean is like six seven, <laughs> six hundred pounds, it's maybe seven hundred pounds." Yeah. And uh, I beat him. So he said, "I just saw you, and you spoke well. USC's got a place for you." Really, because I spoke well, and he saw that. It was <laughs> well, you speak well? That's how they elect presidents in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> you can speak well. Yeah, if you're a black guy that can speak well, <laughs> the sky's the limit, man. You hear that, kids? Study up. <laughs> okay, well, that's another thing. You're arm wrestling, so you're boxing. You're 26. You're working at Honda. You're like this arm wrestling champion in like Japan or something like that. No, it's all over. I went, all over the place. I won nine arm wrestling world championships. Nine arm wrestling world championships. So your real skill skill is you're just a big, strong fucking exactly. guy that you exactly. can just really thank genetics for. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so were there? So you're you're at the back of the room. Your guys are fucking gassing you up, you know. And they're you're like, yo, you should be in the USC. You're starting to be like, I don't know, if this is such a good idea, fellas. Yeah, problem. Art Davies, they get Art Davies on the phone that night? That very night. That night? That very night. That's so And cool. Art Davies is out there <laughs> scouring the world, says, I just happened to see you on TV doing this arm wrestling yeah. shit. I mean, that, if it, that's lightning in a that's bottle. Light, right it, that's, like, that's, like, that's movie magic, you yeah. know? And then, so he said, there's a place for you in the UFC. Exactly. Now, what are you thinking? Well, I wasn't thinking anything. I was just so damn scared as soon as they said, yeah, you're in <laughs> Just the wind went out of my sails, and like I said, you know, <laughs> you know how somebody grows up. Yeah. You know, they expand because they, somebody's um, upset. 
Yeah. Or ex- excited. Yeah. I crawled under. Like, I felt like I had crawled under a couch. I was just... The winds came out of my sail. I didn't want nothing to do with it. I'm thinking, these guys are crazy. I'm thinking, the guys <laughs> are going to fight, fight forever. Yeah. You know, and I'm just stepping in. I don't really know anything. And, you know, so it was... Up and, to work we go. So, and, and within a month... You were fighting in the UFC. Within a month, uh, good. You did your work. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. Listen, within I. A month, <laughs> yeah. Within a month, I'm not that's insane. In within a month, that's so fast from just sitting in your your buddy's basement and the yeah. and and but watching then, it. And that's, yeah. So my question, my question for you is, your buddies who like who clearly believed in you that you could do this, and like they, you know, they called this guy up to get you on UFC. Had they seen you fight in like? On the street or at bars or anything like that, like if I, they, I've never had a fight on the street on the bar. By then, only when well, we fought in the ring for boxing. Yeah. So I didn't know anything about this stuff. I had to go to work. I had to go to. University. You've never, so you've never been in a fight in, in the street. Never. And that's because you've just been so big and black and buried that nobody's ever bothered to fucking. <laughs> <laughs> to the, nobody ever punched your ticket. No, nobody ever. <laughs> you know what? Every time there was a fight, I was either too big, didn't want him to. Yeah. Fight. Or I just blacked out. Because you didn't want to hurt somebody? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Oh, right. I feel a little more confident in here now then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got a heart. <laughs> um, so, this is, but that to me is even a little more crazy because it's like, okay, if you've been like running around knocking guys out, yeah. like Kimbo Slice in the streets, even if you're not necessarily trained to do battle with some of these guys, you got a head full of steam. So you're 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 like four years removed from really any type of competitive fighting. Yes, yes. And then within a month you're fighting these guys in the UFC who have been training, you know, I'm guessing like half there's gotta be some guys in your situation who just get the call, but there's most of these guys have probably been training all their lives. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, like Don Fry was training for quite a while. But uh, you know what? Yeah, we had uh, we had a job to do. I yeah. thought of it the job. I had to leave my job, and in order to do that, I had a new job. I was, uh, you know, I was fine. Uh-huh. That is what we we're doing. These guys are tough. I don't, I don't care what they're doing. In order to step in that ring, you're tough. That's so. Um, and I found this part so fascinating. Just reading up on it. So you figure out where you got to go to go and get like a little wrestling training. Yes. And they're like, hey, we got a guy that we're that we're priming for the UFC yeah. and then you kicked his ass well, uh, well what happened was um, um, I, I got a few friends from work because they were all the friends I had uh, <laughs> yeah. I got a few friends at work and we got a few that's, that's, that's more than most yeah. well, one guy was um, uh, Fong, Fong Tran he, he was going to a gym for um, for Taekwondo or some of the crap like that you know we were watching come watch this uh, this thing in our in our basement, we, man, you gotta see this. Come over to our house and watch this. Ah, these guys are breaking each other, each other, each other, each other's arms and doing all this stuff. And who the hell wants to watch that? Yeah, you know, it's in the back of my head. But of course, the, you know, my chest goes like, yeah, let's take a look. And then, yeah. so, so I went over and took a look at this. And I think, oh, oh, like I'm, like I'm just jumping out of the wind because the, the smoke, the hits that these guys were getting and what they were taking. Oh, You're crazy. watching this. Like, we're watching this yes. at this point. Like, the average person, like, yeah. Jesus Christ, yes. this is crazy. Exactly. And then I saw a little guy, 178 pounds winning, hoist grace. Uh-huh. Like, man, I can kick his ass. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking, man, I can kick his ass. Yeah. But I think out of my mind. I think out of my mind myself. And then these guys are at the end of it. Oh, let's sign up. Let's go get it. And then on TV, kept on this 1-800 number. Buy this hat or this coat or this shoes. Like the USC people, so by the end of it, they're John. So these down guys are writing these numbers down and then calling to be like, no, no, yes. no we don't want to buy nothing. We 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 got a guy. We got exactly. a guy. Exactly. That's so cool. The exact same yeah. thing. And that very night, we got a hold of our Davies. Like I said, the guy that um, invented the, the the thing. So um, then we're uh, then next thing you know, we're off to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Really, that's what happened. Next thing, you're okay. USC's got a place for you. We're on to San Juan, Puerto Rico to fight. And so it's a mo- you've got a month to fucking to go and figure yes, this thing out. Yes. You go to this gym, yes. and and you beat the guy who they're training, yes, handily. Yes. And then I mean, it's that guy's dreams must have been shattered. Uh, oh yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, they had a little crate for him. They had, they had a little bottle. It was a quite big bottle. Everybody in you know, the uh, was going to help him by putting like a quarter, a dollar, or whatever. Yeah. To help him go, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> and then you went and beat him and took the bottle. Yeah. You know, like, that's my bottle now. Basically, yeah. That's just, yeah. <laughs> just showed up to the barbecue <laughs> and fucked him up. I know. <laughs> so, 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 just, a, just stepping on his make-a-wish. Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny about this whole thing, to me, it's like, the... Just your reaction after the fight, where you're elbowing him in the head, and you're like, "Ah!" I, in my mind, I'm like, "This guy's killed people before." And uh, meanwhile, a month before that, you're on the couch quaking in your boots, just yes. going, "Jesus fucking Christ!" Yes. Just, but the only thing that's saving or that's actually keeping you in the game is that you don't want to lose face in front of your buddies. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want. Oh man, I yeah. look like an idiot. Yeah, you don't want to look like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Just toxic masculinity propelling you to greatness. Yes. <laughs> um, so you go there, they, you beat this guy, yeah. you get an honorary black belt. What was the discipline? Koksu Wan. Koksu Wan. Yes. Fourth and degree. Fourth degree. Fourth degree black belt. And they just did that to, to why? To put their name on the back of the... Yeah, put their name on the back, get in there. They're like, we'll give you this, you go, you wear it, you yes. look good. Basically, absolutely, 100%. That's so funny, but it, it's true because I remember like, I remember seeing you and I was just like, oh, this guy's going to be legit. Black belt, big, huge dude, uh, you know? And then, of course, you delivered and I thought nothing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that went about how I thought it was going to go. <laughs> Made it look easy. <laughs> Made it look easy, yeah. yeah. So, your tra- what was the training for that month? Like, this is like a... Re- the, your story right now really is... Like a ridiculous fucking underdog story where it's like Apollo taps Rocky, who's been sitting on the couch, and then he just starts hitting meat, and then he gets ready for this big fight. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It really, it literally is that type of thing. Um, so, what were you, how were you training for those three weeks? Well, first of all, we didn't know that cardio had anything to do with it. Right. Nothing at all. I don't know why, but nobody ever thought about cardio. And to begin with, um, the stuff that we did only got me in trouble. Oh, really? Yeah, so... We didn't have anyone to teach us anything. We did it ourselves. You're flying blind. You're, it's anybody's best guess. Exactly. So we're rolling around in the gym on the guys' carpets, you know, bumping in the couches and the walls and, you know. <laughs> Jim's his basement. Yes. And then we did, you know, the, the guard because we saw people doing the guard and I didn't know what it was. So we're, we're doing this and trying to do locks like uh, Hoist Gracie, but of course we can't. Yeah. Yeah. And off to the UFC I went. Talk about being shot out of a cannon. Shot yeah. out of a fucking cannon, yes. flying blind. This, this is really a dangerous story for the average person out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, because they're going to be like, hey, man, you know, this is like, I, I would equate this to the Rodney Dangerfield story in comedy. Uh, it's like, hey, I got till I'm 48 to make it. No, you uh, don't, dude. It's, d- d- do not try this at home. <laughs> you know? So you get there, and then again, this is just from what I read, but I thought it was so interesting that you just happened to catch, uh, what was his name, Ron Pereira? I don't know, Art. Ron Pereira? No, who's the guy you, whose head you oh, almost fucking Sean, elbowed um, off? Herrera. Herrera, right. Yeah. You just happened to catch him training? Yeah, we're watching him training on the beach in, uh, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. It's a beautiful beach. We're watching him on the beach training, um, and he was doing the same thing over and over and over. And back then, actually, uh, everyone had to come out and say who they are and what they did. Uh-huh. Um, back then, that's what they did. And then you came off and they showed you a little bit of your technique and then you leave. Wow. So they point at the time, uh, we were on the beach and everybody did theirs on the beach. And we kept on seeing Paul Herrera doing the same thing over and over and over again. So uh, my... Uh, like the guy that I trained with, I said, Gary, we know what he's going to do. He's going to do this, this, this. And, uh, you know, at the time, we didn't know what it, was, what it was called. We just said, he's going right. to do this. So we stayed up all night trying to figure out what we're going to do to to make that not work. Right. To make it not, um, plus, plus for us and negative for him. Right. So that's what we came up with on moving. It was supposed to be a gooseneck bend in the wrist. But for some reason, I started rifling with elbows. Oh fuck! Just pure yeah. adrenaline. <laughs> yeah. that's exactly I don't even. That doesn't even like even when like I'm trying to like visualize like how he tackled you and you're gonna get his wrist and bend it. <laughs> like yeah. the elbow seems so much more effective. And that crucifix. It looks like so technically proficient that it, it really looks does. like you've been training your whole yeah. life. It really to just does. Do it really that. did. It. It, and, and then. then and then to throw the elbow, the elbows in. Oh my god! Just yeah, so devastating. Well, that, well, that was not knowing any of the story. It just looks like you're a ruthless killer. Like you've been training your whole life for this moment, and here's some extra elbows. But, <laughs> but now knowing, it's like 
this was all on the fly and it was 100% adrenaline yes. and then you popped up it's and a natural. this is the first fight you've probably been in ever ever this is the first the fight street. you've been in ever uh, that was like not that was it that was, not that was hard, the first so. pro fight yes that is no wonder why you were fucking jumping out of your skin oh, like no, what the just, no, the it was just terrible it was like oh man the incredible hug oh yeah grew up quite a bit what were you what were you what were your nerves right before the bell rang you know the the thing about about the whole thing is that I saw Paul Revere was only 189 pounds, and then on top of it, somebody um we were told that uh, he was racist. He belonged to a racist group. So no, like, no, oh yeah. So it's uh, oh yeah, yeah. They gave me that dude. <laughs> that, oh yeah. So was that even true? Or did they just no, throw they, that in there? They just threw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, that's so uh, great, dude! Yeah. Just to hide me up for the fight, they yeah. threw that in. Yeah. So I was all worked up, man. I gotta beat this guy. I have to beat this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Oh man, what a fucking great story! So you knock him out, <laughs> and then how long between the next fight? There was a, there was a good good while, maybe a half hour, forty five minutes. A <laughs> good while, <laughs> a good time, yeah. like two halftime shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And this is where you're preparing for the second fight. It is so cra- It really is Kumite. It really is blood sport. Like, these guys are digging these guys up and being like, we think you'd be great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and throwing them at each other. And you guys are meeting on the beach yeah. and saying, hey, this is what I do. You know, he probably saw you and he's like, what does he yes, do? He's just a exactly. fucking big bear, you know? Uh, and so what did you say? Your discipline was boxing? My discipline was um, by Kuk Suwan. I said Kuk Suwan. Oh. Okay. So nobody nobody, nobody knows what the fuck that is. I didn't know what it was either. So. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, we went from there. Yeah. And, uh, it was you know, my second one, was Jerry Bolander. Okay. And he was from the Lions Den. With, uh, Ken Shamrock. Yeah. So I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I looked at him and he well, looked at about 200 pounds. I should kick his ass. <laughs> but, uh, back then it was, it wasn't a right of weight. It was just. Just yeah. what it was. So I'm, yeah. In my mind, man, I'm bigger than he is. I should be able to kick his ass. So, <laughs> I love how you are in the UFC uh, with the same mentality as I am sizing guys up in the street. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was like about a buck sixty. I don't care what he does. I'll throw him over a fence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, let's see exactly what we did. Dude. Yeah. So I, I fought him, and man, he gasped. Me. Oh, I couldn't breathe. I went back. <gasps> right. I couldn't catch my breath because the fight lasted down. Um, Five minutes, almost five minutes, which is an eternity. Oh, if you're not prepared for everything, yeah, yeah. I was like I said, we didn't even know I had needed cardio. I thought you just walked in there and punched a few guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. So uh, <laughs> they're thinking, in this guy's and all this guy's cook zoo one training, they never thought to do cardio. No, never thought it was cardio. <laughs> oh god, I don't know how I overlooked it. We just never thought it was. Yeah, cardio. But I mean, but, but okay, but you don't overlook it, and you run for three weeks. I mean, yeah. would have been a little better, but yeah. not really. Yeah, you know. I mean, you're 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 off a fucking assembly line, yeah, and into the and into the and into the UFC. That is a, and then so and then how much longer between that fight and the the fight after it? Um, there was they gave me a little longer time, simply because they had to get the cameras ready and so on and so forth. Right, and like, you won that second that yeah. second. Fight. I won the second yeah. fight. I beat Jerry Bolander. I think in like five minutes, five thirty or something like that. Did you knock him out or? Um, yeah, the, uh, TKO. I think I grabbed him against the fence where he couldn't move and started hitting him. Uh-huh. And then they stopped that. And then, Gary, you're fighting Don Fry. So check this out. Here's the problem with this. We all got little cubby holes for, um, and there was only um, a curtain separating each cubby hole that we stand in. This was bigger than the cubby hole where we are right now. Wow. Um, was like half the size of this. And uh, and only um, a curtain, a, a, a sheet for your bed, was separating your room from the other guy's room. Don Fry was right beside my room, and, and I was, you know, so I came back. They drug me back to the room after the five minute fight. <gasps> I couldn't catch my breath. And he's here. Oh, this. and he's here. And they start saying, "Well, pull me out of the next fight. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't do. It. There's no way I can do it." So, um, uh, everybody got around. It's all Gary. So then they called. Um, we we called the people who we needed to call and said, "No, man, I can't fight." And, I can't fight. I'm, I'm just, I'm gassed. I, I, you know, I can't even catch my breath. You yeah. know, my, my people were telling that because I couldn't talk. Wow. Finally, um, the the owner of the of USC came to me. It was Bob Myrowitz at the time. Uh-huh. And Bob Myrowitz, well, Gary, um, uh, well, you've won 
ten thousand dollars now by now and he says if you win you win another forty so you decide you want to win <laughs> fifty thousand you want to stay with your ten yeah, I can, I, I can count numbers, so yeah. you know. So You're like, oh, I gotta uh, give it a shot. I'll go on it. Yeah, yeah. And wow. So, and then, thing. and then, Fry. How did, how long did that one last? Fry and I lost. I don't know nine minutes on my end. Oh fuck! Yeah. And you were gas going into oh, it. Oh, I was gas going in, but it just went on and on. And on. I, think, I think nine minutes. I'm not sure. Wow. But yeah, it was. Wow. And when you when it was over, you were, were you like, I don't even give a fuck about the money. Um, no, I didn't give a fuck about the money. You're just like I'm glad it's done. I was done. just so happy it was done. That's so, and that and that began really your professional fighting career. That everything started then. That what, is so fucking crazy. What a way to enter a, that. That's world. what I mean. I mean, you've basically entered at most people's pinnacles. Yeah, you know. I mean, and Don Fry was like, he's yeah. a wicked fighter, man. Yeah, like, yeah, anyone yeah, yeah. Who, who hasn't seen him should check out some clips on. Yeah, him. if like, there's a can, hall, if, if there's a hall of fame, he's in it. Yeah, so, yeah. he could throw bombs. Yeah. Wow, that's a. Uh, that's in- <laughs> that's incredible. And then, um, so walking away from that, what did you start doing? I mean, obviously cardio, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, I started uh, doing cardio, right? And that's really that's really all I did because uh, um, they said, "Gary, you're fighting in the next UFC. Do you want to?" And I said, "Absolutely." So um, I just thought it was another chance to win some more money, another, right? Another ten thousand. So, um, yeah, <laughs> so I just started training for it, and, and I knew I needed cardio, so I ran around the track once or twice. <laughs> really? <laughs> really, that was cardio. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, but it, but it really started, I mean, what was, what did you do, like 85 fights over the course of your career? Yes. Around yes, yes, 85, yes. sound about right? Yeah. And one of the things that I think is most admirable is that, I mean, you didn't have a pristine record. You got fucking knocked out a lot. And then we were just, like, getting up and fucking going. 50, yeah. 50, um, out of 50. Right. When when some, you lose some. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, that's that's like, a real fighter spirit. Well, the the thing with, um, I fought primarily in Japan, like 90% of my fights in Japan. And they only cared about what you put into it. Right. So if you gave it your all, you're coming back next time. Really? This was my job, so... If I didn't work, I didn't get paid. Yeah. So you had to go out and give it your all every time. Every time you fight, you give it your all. People see if you're giving your all or mm-hmm. not. They're if paying start, for, for oh, excitement. Exactly. Right? So if you give it your all, yeah. every time, no matter what you win, if you get knocked out, if you don't, if you win, you lose, you have to give it 100%. And I was the, that was just me. If I was going, I was going all. I was go for broke every time. Right. So well, that, they're, they're like a very honorable culture too, exactly. right? Where they'd be like very much honor. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they wake up with the smelling salts, very honorable. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, what was the, uh, the the other clip that is so like classic and I feel like you're famous for is the uh, is squishing the guy's nuts and kicking his nuts. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So and what uh, happened with that fight? Did he like give you a fucking nut shot first? Yeah. Well, hang on. This is going back after uh, before um um I'm pride and everything. Okay. Um, the fight was uh. In uh, IVC, See right, the belt championship belt right there. That's right, that's right. You, the you're IVC. the IVC yeah, champion, exactly. Right. Um, so what happened was, uh, and and how, and, so I'm, so I'm, and I'm jumping around a lot. Sorry, but um, I've also had some concussions. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing hockey. Um, how long after UFC do you fight in the IVC? Um, no, it was June. During it was during the, uh, during the UFC. Okay, so how long after your first bout, where you know the first one that you were in? I think I fought two UFCs and then I went to the IVC. Okay, so you're still so you're like two or three years into your fighting yes, career yes, at this yes. point. You're not super experienced, no. but you've got a lot of professional fights under yes, your belt now. Yes. Okay. So I went through the I went through the IVC, and they said, "Gary, um, there's no rules." I said, there's no rules. He said, "Yes, there's no rules." He said, "Just so long as you, if you poke somebody in the eye, they're gonna poke you back in the eye. There's no rules." So I flat was, out fucking street. There's fight. no rules. There's no rules. Mm-hmm. I said, there's no rules. Are you sure? I says, yeah. There's no rules. Wow, I'm coming down. So on the, <laughs> on the plane, I went to Brazil. Again, drill, just like I uh, talked about in one minute, got in the next. Right. And I go down to this tournament, and they gave me all these guys. These are all fighting, and you had to fight a tournament. Um, so you had to beat people. You, you yeah. Down, you advance and advance. How many? How many guys? UFC uh, was three guys. You had to plow through to win the championship. This is three, three guys. guys. So I, I think uh, the last guy I fought Pedro his Pedro his or whatever that was his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Pedro or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I fought this guy. And 
we both met up at the end. And um, this is for the championship. This is for the championship. <laughs> there's no uh, keep in mind. There's no rules. Yeah. So uh, he was he was he was winning me, and I thought to myself, I'm gonna put my hand down in the jock and move it to the side, and I'm gonna punch him in the jock with his dick halfway out and halfway in. So <laughs> bah, when I smack it, it'll chop it off. So, <laughs> this was the thing in my head. This, yeah. was the, this was the thing. As he's got you in like a neck yes, hold or something? Yes, yeah. I'll put a jock to the side and then nail him. And then, so I started trying to do it and uh, yeah, he goes, ah, ah, ah. So he's trying to, he's trying to act now like I'm, yeah. like I'm, you know, pulling his, his pin and uh, Pulling his pin, so I, I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> so I really wasn't pulling his pin. Well, I just was kept with this story because it sounded good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not pulling his pin. I was, like I said, <laughs> for the record, he was not pulling. His pin. I was not pulling his yeah. pin. I was trying to move his jock to the side, halfway on and halfway off, so I could nail him. Because there's, no there's no rules. Because there's no rules. Oh yeah. And uh, that's such a dirty street fight move. Oh, and the yeah. thing that you've never been in a fucking street fight before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's such a bar brawler's fucking it is, mentality. It, you know? it is. It is mentality. But I was losing every other part of the game. Boxing, yeah. stand fucking, up. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So I, you know, are you gonna lose? Are you gonna lose fifty thousand? You're gonna gain fifty thousand. Well, yeah. I think I'm gonna win. So yeah. I just try to win. And that's if I had to pull his pull his peener off, he was coming off. <laughs> You know, just, guys, keep in mind, there's no rules. Yeah. So, I, I love that you initiated it, though. Uh, <laughs> so, then, so he was like, oh, looking around, like, oh, what are yeah. you guys going to do? And they were like, well, yeah, you can't do anything. Down, there's yeah. no rules. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Right. The guy that was running the tournament, he was a referee. Yeah. So the guy started screaming, I was nuts. Oh, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then after the fight, after the fight, the guys came and said to me, Carrie, you ruined my show. What are you talking about? He said, you ruined my show because we're in Brazil. We're in their backyard. Uh -huh. I fought a Brazilian. I pulled this Peter, and I still won. You <laughs> yeah. know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were supposed to be. Yes, you know, yes, yes. As it was written, it was supposed to be this guy a beats Brazilian. the big yes. black fucking yes, man. And then Canada. meanwhile, you're fucking. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Anything to win. The only rule is win. Well, they said, yes, exactly. They said no rules. Did no they, rules. So they gave you the 50,000? They're like, they, you ruined my, yes. like, reluctantly, like, you ruined the show. Yes, but here's the 50, yes, dude. That's exactly what they did. <laughs> Just so like, this idea how you did it. Like, yeah. Exactly. Here's your money. See you later. Yeah. But they were pissed. Yeah. yeah. But you, so you got the belt, the money, you jumped on the plane, yes. and you were like, fuck yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. Real, exactly. cl real classy, Goodrich. Yeah. Real classy, <laughs> bud. <laughs> but I was $50,000 richer. Fuck yeah. Right, man. Yeah, yeah. What you do with the money? Yes. Well, no, I'm, I'm not sure what I did with it. Oh, okay. I thought maybe <laughs> it put it on this house. Yeah. yeah, it disappeared, yeah. right? Yeah. When you're making it quick and easy, you always yes. think the next check's coming in. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Got a nice belt that's still having. Yeah. No, that's no, no. Awesome. Your, your, uh, your living room here is a, is a great collection of all your of all your fight stuff. You got some great posters yeah. and shirts and yeah. some really great stuff. Um. So then what, so this is, you're two years in, what are you now, 34? I started at 30, no. Right. 32. So you're, oh, so you're 32 right now. No, no, I, I started at 30. Oh, you started at 30. So you said two years in, 34. Okay, so I'm just trying to get a, so you're the IS, IBC champ at, at what? Uh, 32. 32. Oh, yes. So you still got another 12 years of going. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I it's great. So after that fight, I came back for UFC nine. Sorry, uh -huh. UFC ten, and Ultimate Ultimate, and then uh, UFC nineteen was the last one. So um, off I went. It was a great time. Um, then one day somebody called me up, and from Japan, Gary Gunner, how are you? Because you know it's in the middle of the night, so it's yeah. daytime. Um, would you like to come? Well, the first day, would you like to come and arm us the one hundred people? And I said, am I going to get paid? They said, yes. <laughs> um, you will get paid. So I went down to Armas Honor People and, you know, it was for a TV show. Yeah. Uh, on New Year's Eve and I won. I won. So then. You uh, meet 100 people? Yes. Japanese then, people? Yes. <laughs> then, uh, like, yeah, yeah, there's the story. <laughs> then they called me back that same week before I even left. Gary Gunnar, um, 
Would you come and arm us a thousand people in Japan? <laughs> come on, man. I, no, I swear to God. I swear to God. How do you even do that? That's like a they, three day thing. They must so have they thought said, you're Godzilla. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I said, yeah. I said, well, what am I going to win? So the other people, I told them, well, 5,000. You know, just give yeah, me 5,000. Yeah, yeah. I said, what's it worth to you? I said, well, 2,500, 5,000. So I said, okay. So these people, I asked them, well, where do you It's on top of the game? If they jump that is so fast, they, yeah. they must be paying a big money. Yeah. So uh, they want me to do a thousand people this time. Please so tell me you did it times uh, ten. Uh, uh, so yeah. Like it's five thousand per so, hundred, buddy. So, yeah, I got to, out of that deal. I got fourteen. So I come down and I'm just a thousand people. So away I went. I said, well, how much are you going to charge me? I said, well, I'll charge you fifteen thousand. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah they said okay. So uh, <laughs> but he like fuck man. Yeah. I want to hire again. So I went down. Yeah, they did because they jumped at it real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I went down there and I almost said, um, you know, a thousand people. It was pretty good. Everyone he lined up in a line. The line went forever. This one, this one, this one, this one. What they did was they bought a thousand t shirts. And they gave them all to all the fighters. And not to their, their, um, their, their arm muscle. They ripped the t-shirts so that... Uh, Nobody can go again. Exactly. Can't right, get a t-shirt right, right. tribute. None. Right. You know, so... Um, and what would they have won if they would have beaten you? They would have won the money. The, so, oh, wow. First of all, it was 14000 to show up. Okay. And then another 14000 if you won without losing. Oh, nice. There was no way I'm losing none. So you beat a the, thousand there people was, in a row in an arm yes, wrestle. Yes, and actually 200, <laughs> 250, sorry, 230... To 235, I do the one finger and not lose. One finger? Yeah, one finger, I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> what did you buy for some women? And, no, there was no women. There were no. all guys, yes. They were just did. all dudes? Yes. And yeah. some of them were like really tiny, scrawny dudes? Man, they big, small, tall. But yeah. they, they had them all. This yeah. is like the sequel to Over the Top. It this, really this is. should be the it's sequel. It's such a ridiculous idea. Yeah. It makes me want to start producing Japanese television. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. So this is before Pride. This is before Pride. So you're so you're kind of getting some star power over there. Yes. You That's know, like some power. some recogniz- recognizability. Yes. Learning the culture, getting a little bit more established 100%. in a different country where, yes. you know, you would, coming from Canada, I mean, that's a big culture shock, yeah. I would think. And people are probably looking at you on the streets like, you know, yeah. you're stopping traffic. Oh, yeah. Big you know? dude in, uh, yeah. in Japan. Oh, yeah. In Japan, they're like, oh. <laughs> you know, taking their cameras out, like, you're never going to see this again. But yeah. the, the thing is that, oh. Japanese people are only small over here. Over there, right. they're like six feet, six ten, six eleven, six twelve, seven feet. Over there, we only get the sh- they only send us the small ones. They only export the shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is happening. You're thirty three, thirty four. Yeah. When yeah. did you start getting into pride? Uh, I started getting into pride right after the um, USC. You've seen. Um, just after USC 19, you know, I was like, holy shit, what am I doing now? I'm going to go back to work. Uh-huh. And uh, so I, I did USC 19, job. you're 39. No, it wasn't 39. Just oh. That. Um, so That's, USC 19, how old are you? I don't recall. I'm, I'm, I'm 52 right now. Okay. So at this time, I can't remember. I was old. So, uh, right, right, yeah. So I and um, my age. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'm thinking I got to go back to work too. Uh, <laughs> So, but you're so you you fought. It's you. Did you retire after this? After that last UFC UFC nineteen? No, no, I didn't retire there. Okay, um, but but that's done, and you're like, fuck, I got to go back to work. Yeah, and then uh, just before um, it was all done, um, Pride said, "Hey, listen, um, uh, Kawasaki called me. Booker K mm-hmm. called me and said, uh, would you? We got an organization over here. Would you like to fight for us?" So again, I can count. So I said, "Sure." Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. What are yeah. you guys gonna pay? You know, the way I went. So um, I started making money, just fighting people again. You know, so um, how were these fights? I mean, these fights were pro- were like they, they at least they weren't stacked one after the other. No, or, well, um, there was one fight, but uh, it was tough. I really, knew. these guys were tough. So um, you had to stay on top of the ball game. Then I started to understand how the game how to train, how to fight. You know, there still wasn't clubs open. Like, there was still these uh, karate schools and all. Right. Uh, teaching people karas and all that crap. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> all that useless fucking yeah, garbage. Exactly. It's yeah. a form of meditation. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> oh, shit. It's so funny. So, you've reached this level, and you still really haven't had much of a 
No. Train. Like, you're no. not really training. No. You've gone through all these UFCs, yes. and you're just relying on... Just relying Your on fucking amateur on boxing Bruce history, strength. Brute, yes. strength, Brute strength, your animal instincts. Yes. 100%. <laughs> so I get over to Pride now, and I start uh, start relaxing. So I went and I, I, I fought. My first fight was um, um, the Russian bear, Oleg Taktov. Now, if you remember, he won a UFC beating Tank Abbott. Do you remember that? No, I don't. Way back when. I bet you I saw it, but I don't. In the UFC, he beat Tank Abbott, so he was a tough competitor. Right. And I've and seen him fight before. And he won a UFC. Um, right. Um, and um, these guys are all like you. They're just like, where's the money? Yeah. Right? Like, they're just yeah. going to where the, where exactly. the money is, you know? Exactly. This guy, Oleg Taktarov, he's since acted in many movies. Oh, interesting. He's, him, even now, he's a bad you know, dude. He's a bad dude. Mm. Do you remember him? I do, yeah, yes. yeah. So, um... So they give me a one tick tariff. I'm thinking, holy shit. I just seen him win the UFC. Like, what am I going to do? I was kind of nervous. And, um, you know, um, they send you, you need gloves. When they told me that you need gloves, you need to buy some gloves. So I bought a place they got to buy your own damn gloves. So I <laughs> went and I got out my own gloves. Um, and I put them on. If it was, um, you know, what was it? The um, Chuck Norris wrist wraps. Club. I got them, put them on, trained with them. I felt that was tough. So I head over to uh, to Japan to fight over Oleg Taktarov. And, you know, we're walking around the room, side each other up the whole week that we were there before, kind of looking at the side of the eye, you know, get your, your uh, team to kind of eye him up and see what he's doing, how's he training. Yeah. If he's training, what's he eating. You know, the things that you go through regularly. Like, yeah. Anything with anybody else with you. Right, you want right, to see right. what your opponent's doing. So, of course, I'd be up in the room. I'd send these guys out to go figure out what's going on. So, um so then, uh, you know, we fought, and I ended up knocking him out cold, man. Damn! He fell nose in the ground. His, his toes, he was the only guy I ever seen. His toes flipped over like that and stayed like that. He didn't, <laughs> and it wasn't like that. His toes were like, like Somebody dropped straight. the house on him. Oh, yeah. His, his toes were like this oh, wow. in the ground. It wasn't like flopped or flopped. Right. His toes went like that, and that's how his nose went. I was like, holy shit. I think I killed this guy. <laughs> my mind, that's what my, my mind got rigor mortis, yeah. right? I thought I killed this guy. I was so mad. I, I didn't know what to do. I was uh, scared that I killed this guy. And, and and the building, was it like the air sucked out of the building? Oh, Did yeah, they think yeah. you killed him too? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone thought, I, we thought he was dead. Wow. And, uh, you know, they had to take him on the stretcher. Wow. <laughs> they had to bring in a stretcher in the room and take him on. I'm like, holy bring shit. Bring in a priest? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought I killed him. I really thought Amazingly, he gets up and continues to fight and has a yeah, career, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the job. Exactly. I, th I thought this guy was done. He was dead. Mm. How you long know? till you found out that he was okay? Like uh, they they took him right from the ring, right to the hospital, right away. So like, oh, how many how many times have you seen somebody carried out of the USC or anything? On yeah, a stretcher. Yeah. Very rarely. Uh -huh. Very rarely. Right uh -huh. out of the ring to a stretcher. Holy shit! So when you get the news, were you relieved? Yeah, of course. Okay, You're right. Like, Right, right, right. It's going in the next one. Yeah. You're like, oh, man, this is good. Okay, continue, ladies. Yes. <laughs> He's alive, thank God. Uh, yeah, I like that. I'll continue, ladies. <laughs> oh, God. That was a good one. Oh, man. <laughs> so, so you're fighting, you're flying all over the world. You've been to Japan, you've been to Brazil, yeah. and, uh, and some other places. Yes. And so, I mean, you're living this lifestyle. When it starts to wind down, yeah. like how long before you retired did you say, I don't know how long, much longer I can do this? Uh, um, I was really done at, uh, at 2000, 2001, I was done. Okay. But I stuck in the other few years just because of money, you know? Right. Um, you're used to making um, X number of dollars. Uh, sure. You know, the quick money, like how, yeah. how do you go back to, you know, Peanuts. going, yeah, and, you know, making that over four months. Yes. You know? The thing is that I'll, when you're used to having a million dollars, you spend a million and one. Yeah. When you're used to having a hundred thousand, you spend a hundred thousand and one. Oh, but that's you're, just you're it's different. Yeah. Fucking describing my father, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody. But not the, the whole. I mean, you may yep. spend. If you're making a million, you might spend nine 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 nine. All right. You know, you might spend less than a hundred bucks. Right. But the thing is that how I was used to spending this much money, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I knew it was going to stop. I knew it was going to stop. And no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll have another fight. Then all of a sudden, it stopped. Boom. Holy fuck. I had to get rid of my house. 
because mm. I was still getting another hundred thousand on it. Right. And, um, the whole time, many years, I like, man, I'll pay that off. I'll pay that off. I'll right, that right, off. right, right. And of course, it comes right to the end. Shit. Then I had to sell. That I was moving to this one, and uh, it was all right. I don't mind. Uh, yeah, but, this is a fine house. I pulled up thinking <laughs> it's a nice house. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh huh. So um. And I know that uh, your book, Gatekeeper, talks about CT. I don't know much about it, but at what point do you... It, it, was it during your fighting or after the fighting when no, you started I'm, feeling like, oh, man. Um, during the fight, out to the end. Okay. Like, to, going towards the end. Uh, my best friend, Mike Mobs, people that have known me for a while, so I was like, Gary, you're changing. Like, um, we told you, did you not understand what we said, or we told you that already? You know, I said, uh, we told you that. Well, we told you that five times already. What are we doing? You know, people started not saying that to me quite a bit. You know, I just thought, well, somebody said they told you that already. What do you think? They had a couple too many Millers. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, like, what do you think with that? You know? Right. So, um, just went on and went on. Oh, it's okay. So then finally, um, I had a really bad outburst, mm. and, uh, and from there, I ended up, uh, I ended up in jail. And, oh. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, well, man, the cops come, came, and then they put me in a padway, and that, that's when they figured that something was wrong. Okay. Then I went to... Uh, Your buddy, Mike, who, who said, Gary, I, you know, something's yeah. going on. You're not, was he one of the guys that was dialing Art Davies in the room that day? No. Nah, yes, yes, he was. He was, he was, he was, he was one of the guys, guys in the room. Man, yeah. What a... What a what a key per, oh, part of your life, this guy. Yeah, shout out to Mobs. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He's at the start. He's at the end. Right. Yeah, he, he was a good man. I, you know, he's, we've been best friends since I was eight years old. Oh, nice. Great man. Anyways, um, <laughs> and also so terrified of you. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> he thinks that you could beat these fucking guys yeah. for no reason. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how it was. You know, you know, um, you have a big violent outburst. Uh huh. Um, and that they came quite often. You know, yeah. You know, one day you're you're fine. Next day you're happy. You're sad. And these things go on all in one day. You're happy. You're sad. You're upset. You're mad. Right. Um. You know. You have a whole feelings and things going through your body, and nobody knows what's wrong. Uh, ever. Then you start understanding different things, and you go to uh, counseling, and people are telling the same things, and nobody wants to solve the problem everybody says right. you, you have Every, a problem you have right, a right, problem right, right, right. Everybody, solve... everybody wants to comment on the symptoms <laughs> yes but, but nobody, nobody wants can figure to... it out yes so then finally I went to Dr. Ostrolani from the UFC sorry the UFT oh, you... oh UFT, University yeah. of Toronto yes. was... <laughs> yeah very uh, quite the difference there <laughs> yes and uh, I went there and she diagnosed me with uh, chronic sure. CG yeah, and, uh, and yeah, it's quite a, an unfair name to give to somebody who has a hard time remembering things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, chronic, I, I could read it. I was like, Ugh, I'm gone yeah. after the third syllable, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's chrom chronics, um, chronic. I don't even traumatic, know. traumatic, plastic, right, 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 right. Yeah, that's what the E stands for, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Um, so what was the is was the, was there treatment? I mean, you seem you, uh, no, you there seem wasn't treatment now. now. Well, the thing is, uh, they flood you with pills. Now I'm, okay. I'm taking about uh, ten, fifteen pills a day, just now. just uh, on a normal level. Mm. Um, you know, because you know, I didn't take my pill this morning. And oh. I'm getting, sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get Dave, a little you angry. <laughs> Dave, you're, you're first. You will be the fucking sacrificial <laughs> lamb. <laughs> Dave McInnes, another yeah. comedian, sitting yeah, yeah, yeah. with us watching yeah, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. He's a yeah. Gary, um, you can kick okay, his so fucking head so off. You, know, you, gotta take, you gotta take these pills in order to keep you out of level. Keep, keep your brain out of level. Keep mm. you out of level. Um, it's not like a chemical sedation or anything. It's just to help you. Um, you know, it's, it's these drugs to relax you rather right. than rather than being an 80 all day right down to 40 you know you're not relaxing yeah you're pretty relaxed you seem pretty relaxed right yeah now. uh I, marijuana wasn't uh marijuana, <laughs> wasn't as a matter of fact it. somebody said that somehow a doctor actually said that to me i want to try medical marijuana no, uh -huh. uh, not yet yeah 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 um well listen man thank you so much for for taking your time out today is that it Do you want to and sitting with us that's it I don't know we can keep going I yeah. don't I just don't have any more questions <laughs> uh, is there anything you want to talk yeah, about yeah is there anything 
Yeah. Hey, hey, you want to say? Yeah, you know what? When I was diagnosed with this stuff, you know, it just went on, and then you always have problems with, um, like I said, people always, everybody tells you you got a problem. You got a problem. Gary got a problem. And the people close to you tell you that there's a problem. Like uh, mm-hmm. my mother, my sisters that are very close to me, uh, Gary got a problem. And you really, you really don't go and look into it. Um, you know, like I said, I had a violent outburst, uh-huh. and I ended up in jail, and things were too good, um, you know. And then it started. People are starting to understand what is wrong. But even when you say that, people don't really understand. Even when they see that all these football players, and right? And this is all sort of coming around within the last six or seven years, exactly. where like you know, there's this type of like sort of public awareness. Yes, people start killing themselves, start killing right. other people, and you know. Right. Um, just because of this. So, and actually, here's another, another point here. When I was diagnosed with CTE, I am the first person that ever would diagnose with CTE that I would, didn't have to be dead. Really? They usually diagnose you with CTE. Wow. With, a, with an yes, autopsy. They got to look at your brains. Yeah. Wow. They got to look at your brains to see the mush. Uh-huh. I'm hmm. the first person diagnosed with CTE that did not to be dead. Oh, wow. Well, wow, that's that's progress, I'd yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. That's big progress. Now in the a field. lot of people have been diagnosed with it, but right. I was the first, yeah. Right, right, right. Well, is, it, is it generally like football players, football, boxers, hockey, boxers, some hockey guys, I'm sure? Oh, yeah. Is it, you know, I wonder... Repeated concussions. Repeated, yeah. Repeated. How, many, how many do you think... I, I sustain. You, you piled up. You probably got to get one every time you get knocked out, right? Yeah, you get one every time you're knocked out, but the thing about this is that how people think because I racked up four or five, I'm just yeah. wondering if I've got like yeah. if I'm gonna get a, a a baby little version of it. You know, <laughs> my wife tells me all the time. That, I already told you that, but I think that's everybody. You just don't <laughs> listen to your wife, John. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> you just don't listen. Um, so, but so you, all your knockouts, and then you know probably a few more. Yeah, yeah. you know the, the thing about them, like I said, like I was saying, with fighting. You're trained for a fight, so you can't train with lambs if you're fighting lions. Right. You have to train with other lions and bigger lions than the lion you're fighting. Right. So when you train with these lions, you're going to get damaged. So if I'm fighting a three-minute fight and a three rounds, right. you're not going to train three rounds. You're going to train 15, 20 for many days and weeks right. in front right. of that. Right, hundreds, so hundreds of Can you rounds. imagine how many times you can get in, in concussed? You get in the head. So the thing is, when you get concussed... Mm-hmm. It's not really the fight. It's a, all the days and weeks before that fight that you're training because, and then when you get a stinger, so oh, that's just stinger, carry on. Uh-huh. And you go, oh, you fall down and got a little dizzy because the guy got a little lucky. Oh, it's all right. Take some water, cool yourself up, go back in. Right. And this is what happens is so that nobody ever gets a rest, you know, because now that people understand what's going on, I am sure positive they're still still doing it that way it has to be oh yeah how else do you fucking train for these exactly for these grueling events otherwise you're gonna get like these watered down situations yes you know these or these watered down fighters yes so what what they're gonna do is uh instead of um like right now once you get a concussion that's it they will do but they only count the concussions in the ring mm. what about all the concussions before the ring and see that's that's not what they don't so you do probably that. got a hundred yes yes wow. i got quite a bit um on on paper, yeah, I've had like eighteen. Uh-huh. Off paper, probably like one hundred eighteen. Yeah. yeah, right. Like yeah, yeah. those stingers where they're you know, yeah, yeah. like you know, yeah. man those, up, snap out of it. Yeah, take yeah. a seat for a Go minute, and in, you yeah. get back up, and you yes, and you start going. Well, I'm glad you. Uh, I'm I'm glad you, you you continued to to talk about that because it's that's, that's mm-hmm. information that I just don't think many people know. Many people don't know. They don't yeah. know this because... Even, like, especially the training and all that stuff? I yes. never would have thought about that. You know? And all the guys listening to this who think that they can go out and start fighting at 30. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think about that one, too. Just, just wait. Yeah. Yeah. Not so fast. <laughs> Stick to the video games. <laughs> um, what, about your, um, what about your childhood? My childhood was good. I, had, uh, I grew up with four sisters and okay. myself. You know, um, it was tough because, uh, you know, as I said... Was your old man a tough guy? He was just a big idiot. He was just a big idiot. <laughs> My dad. Was, uh, no Father's Day cards uh, here. Uh, 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 no. And like six, four and a half, six, five, three hundred plus, four hundred plus, you know. Wow. Uh, he was just a big idiot. Mm. Uh, was he violent? No. Really? No, not that I saw anyone. They, they, yeah. So where did you even get this shit? Friends. Friends pushed me into it. I, they... 
they shoved me into but it. But even the boxing, though, like early on, I did friends too. They were just like, "Oh man, you know big. what? I, no, I used to get bullied from the guy up the street." And, mm. and so then, going to boxing or going to karate and you know and all that shit, uh, really not to do anything but give you confidence within right. yourself. Right. But it, um, and the bully up the street, did you ever straighten him out or? No, they, you, you know, I didn't I'd confront like him. Yeah, no, I, I'm, <laughs> I've never confronted him. Well, we're good friends now. When I say yeah, well, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. sure he cozies yeah. up to yeah. you. Oh, hey, man. Uh, <laughs> hey, Gary. <laughs> hey, you like your coffee, Gary? Yeah. <laughs> Chris? Yeah, I think I saw him outside pruning the hedges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So funny. Um, what? Well, it's a. Uh, it really is a fascinating tale, and it is really nothing that I expected coming into it. Dave, no. did you have any questions? Because Dave uh, had some questions before. Just uh, keep... about the child. Um, no, not really right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your time is this. There's a hey, reason. You got a Molson Canadian back there? <laughs> I'm still hungover. <laughs> yeah. Fighting, fighting's a tough way to make a buck. It is, yeah, it is man, tough. It really is. It's a tough And like I said, you know, um, about the concussions, you never know. Um, you never know because here's the the other thing, fighters are fighters. You know, regardless of what happens here, when we're in the gym, we fight. Yeah. Uh, and if you get a concussion, you get hurt. Sometimes you don't even know because the fighter won't tell you. Right, right, right. The fighter will not tell his coach, or sometimes you can't even tell your coach because yeah. you don't even know where you are. Yeah, right. Many times, uh, many times I've had a fight, didn't even know I fought, got in the back, or you didn't even know how you did. You got in the back, like, how did how did I do? Did I win? Yeah, you know, many times, mm-hmm. and I'm sure I'm not the only fighter that does that. You know, I, you know, get in the back, and oh, did I win? Did, did, what I remember getting a concussion at a hockey game. Uh, I was a kid, as a kid, and then one of the parents went to drop me off. Yeah, and I didn't know where I lived, and I was like, I don't know, maybe around here somewhere. And they were just uh, looping around like, oh, the man, neighborhood yeah. for 15 oh, minutes shit. until I could figure it out. And I don't even think I ever figured it out. I think they just let me off at the corner, and somebody walked me in. Wow. You know, but um. I got a question for you. Who's the the guy that uh, you maybe were the most nervous or apprehensive about fighting beforehand, like leading up, like maybe they had a ton of hype or you just seen him do some serious damage? Yeah, there was um, there was a guy. I kind of forgot who the hell it was, but uh, I'm man, to be honest with you, I was nervous and apprehensive fighting everybody. Mm-hmm. Right, and if you're not, you're gonna have fucked. Up. Yeah, right. have to be scared and nervous because everybody's trying to take your crown. You got a crown, yep. and you want to keep that crown. It doesn't matter if you're a champion or not. Yeah, you got a crown, and you're trying to keep your crown. And people are all trying to take it. You're trying to take it. So, and the thing about fighting is that now you have to be a champion every day. In terms of, uh, we're gonna have to put our shoes on. I want to be the first one with my shoes on tied up. We're gonna go to the car. I got to be at the first one. Of these. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you got to be like, competitive. Even nobody's competitive, competitive around you. Yeah, but you competitive. Like, it's uh, uh, living with urgency, sort yes. of. Yes. Yeah. Um, not not urgency. It's just you gotta have a winning mindset. Yes, one hundred percent. Okay. You have to have a winning mindset at everything, not just fighting. Everything, everything. And once you have a minute winning mindset, um. You make yourself want to win. You're gonna per, you're gonna perform that way. Uh-huh. Um, you're gonna train that way because if somebody's doing a round, if somebody's doing five rounds really hard, holy shit, you got to do six or seven. You're right, right. You know? And that's how you think. You when you're training by yourself, yeah. When the coach, uh, when I you're w- done, when you're done, the opponent's already done it and done it twice. Right. So you got to go on back then and get that done. Mm. You know, so when you're done then, you know, he has two more to do in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So you, this, you always got to play a trick on your mind. Always always have to have a winning attitude. Mm-hmm. Always. You got to keep pushing, always, 100%. Uh, I want to share a personal story. When I was at the gym, there was a woman on the step machine beside me. And she was at, like, level 10. And I was like, I got to go level 11 on this chick. <laughs> <laughs> Level up. Did you win? Yeah. She got off at 10 minutes. I stayed on for 30. Take uh, that. Take uh, that, lady. <laughs> Actually, oh, God. Here, sir, I, I do have one question for you, buddy. Uh, about what you're saying about the winning mindset and stuff uh-huh. like that. I've been a pussy my entire life. Uh-huh. And I was telling you a little bit before, but like the last year, I've had my ass kicked by like six girls. And I think I'm going to start... <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna start fucking sticking up for myself. So any pointers <laughs> going into that situation? Pointers. Any pointers? But yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Gary Goodrich on hitting women. That or will you come home? <laughs> that or will you come home with me and uh, help me kick some of these girls' ass? Will you, will you help me out here, buddy? Or what? I mean, I think I ain't open. <laughs> yeah, the, the dog sounds like he wants to help it too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get a pet. Get yeah. a pet, Dave. Yeah. Uh, listen, man. Thank you so much for uh, for for talking with us today. It's really been great talking to you, man. We really appreciate you inviting us into your home and, and seeing all of your uh, your awesome shit. I would end right there, but I think Tyler's taking a piss, and I'm sure he <laughs> would like to say thank you and goodbye. Make sure um, he washes his hand. Yeah. Wash your hand. <laughs> Wash my hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't dare. Yeah, right. I wouldn't right, dare right. make that faux pas. Yeah. Well, I'm dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, Gary, thanks very. I was just saying, thanks very much, man. This is a really great interview, man. Absolutely. And, um, pick up Gary's book. It's been out for a little while, but let's let's give it another little bump. It's uh, it's Gatekeeper. It, it talks about his fight. How did you get the name Gatekeeper? Well, um, you know, it's just a book. It's just oh, everyone said, "Oh, you're you're the gatekeeper." Of the world. Oh, right. Well, that's what I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. Online, it said like he was the gatekeeper into like the heavyweight thing. It's like you want to come in here. Well, here's your test. Yeah, test your I mean, That was really in pride. Pride. That was in pride, huh? That was pride. Yeah, and I, I was thinking about your so gatekeeper's a nickname. Uh, Big Daddy. Big Daddy is yeah. is the name. I was we we got to get another nickname. I felt like. The black bear of Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a big bear. Oh, you, want, you guys want to be a back and fight it, huh? <laughs> like the black bear fairy. Yeah. <laughs> well, well thank, again, man, thanks very much for all your time today. And uh, I, we would love to check in with you in the future. No problem. And, um, that's it, man. Uh, my oh, name is John Moses. Hang on, or, man. Uh, hang on, man. Oh. I'd, like you, I'd like for you to talk to um, Dave Bennett, too. He's actually a good... Oh, really? Good person. Yeah, Dave Benito. He's in Toronto. He's a, Actually, he's a lawyer now. He left fighting and started being a lawyer. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's a lawyer today. He got married and, and a lawyer. Dave Benito. Yeah, right. Dave Benito. Yeah. Ben, yeah, we'll get that contact information. That's a fucking great lead. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you very much. And um, so that's it. Uh, John Moses. We're, we're, by the way, did we say it? We're in, we're in Barrie, Ontario. Uh, we're uh, we're traveling far and wide to get these interviews, man. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much, John Moses, Tyler Morrison, um, the legend, Big Daddy, mm-hmm. Gary Goodrich, and then fucking Dave McInnes, little deadbeat Davy, <laughs> deadbeat Davy, yeah. fresh Dave. off of getting stabbed <laughs> by his girlfriend, <laughs> needing, needing help on not being fucking abused by women. Yeah. <laughs> they don't make it look like they used to, Gary. Uh. Got any advice for when your girlfriend attacks you with a broken glass in your sleep? Uh, yeah, Gary gave advice. He said, get a dog. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, All great. right, beautiful. Thanks a lot. All right, uh, take two. We just wanted to uh, to come back because uh, how we – one of the ways that we're – you know, Gary was sort of put back on our radar or even on the radar is our buddy Mark Trinidad who lives in Barrie said that his daughter actually goes to your school. So I just wanted to talk about that. Um, it's called a Canadian Top Team. We teach people how to beat each other up and how to, <laughs> uh, and, and how to protect each other. So, you know, really, it's a, it's a very good cardio. If you don't want to beat anyone up, it's an amazing workout. Right. Uh, stand up and on the ground. And uh, we have a good time. Oh, we have wow. a good time. Lots of laughs. Um, but you can contact anybody, myself or Donnie Muntz, uh, 705-896-6219. Um, Contact him, he'll get you involved. Okay, great. And, and let's face it, everyone in Barry wants to beat someone up. You know, <laughs> yeah. one you time go, with you the go other. down to the ranch, you're probably going to get piss popped tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one time or the other. Or yeah, yeah. You zip your fly up. That doesn't happen yet. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and so Dave just went to, to use Gary's bathroom because you didn't take a shit in there, did you? I don't let people shit in my house. That is another <laughs> That's another champion secret. Yeah, that's, you don't that's, let people sit on the king's throne. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's one of those qualms about me. I just, I can't have people shit in my house. <laughs> I mean, that's... Uh, it, honestly, you just saying that binded me up. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I gotta have a coffee and an emodium to uh, let my uh, asshole relax. Uh, <laughs> There's a, a gas station up the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Bob. You got to go to the gas station. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just can't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the byproducts of CTE is people can't shit in your house anymore. <laughs> Think about it. If uh, somebody comes over your house to have a shit, what do you say? No. Go to your own house. 
imagine that family or friends come in your house, sit a while, and get used to wash. I'm like, fuck, don't you know to shit in the mornings? I go. <laughs> Those are not the type of violent outbursts we expect yeah, around yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I literally shit everywhere I go. I'm so glad I have to shit here. So my well, my, my stomach was rumbling earlier. I bet you yeah. you were going not today, no, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so he's with, this is, this is dying right now. No, uh, he's a pooper and shark to my sheep catcher. She had, she had, Come on, Gary, it was him. <laughs> a, there's a clock when the door closes. Yeah. It just uh, counts you down. Uh, <laughs> well, All so right, funny. Well, thanks, man. We just, no, on. Oh, we, we, you can also um, contact me on Twitter. Okay, great. Gary H. Goodridge. Is it? Yeah. At Gary H. Goodridge. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Right on. And there you uh, go. follow Gary, man. Absolutely. No, thanks again. And, uh, you know, this is awesome. This has been a blast. Yeah, so. great. Another episode of Fight Stories on Twitter at John Moses. At Tyler Morrison One. Beautiful. Again. All right. And the at Gary is all Gary. yours. <laughs> when I walked in the door, I said, thank you, man. Thank you for having me in your house. And he goes, the pleasure is all yours. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's it. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Fight Stories. Hope you guys like listening as much as we like making the episodes. If you did, this is what you can do you can share, subscribe, and rate us on whatever platform that you guys are listening on. iTunes is big for us. And, of course, we want to hear your fight stories. If you got them, we want to hear them. You got a tough down? Let us know. On Facebook, it's fb.me slash fight stories. On Instagram, it's at fight stories podcast. And on Twitter, it's at fight stories pod. What are you waiting for, tough guy? <laughs>